Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and for today we are back on Fire and Maneuver after a bit of a break because we finally have the ability to play with the new and entirely reworked artillery alongside getting to playtest the two new factions that are going to be added with the Boshin War DLC, the Shogunate and the Imperial Japanese. It is a very exciting time. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the reworked artillery, as there is a lot that has changed with artillery. Practically every artillery has, is fundamentally different, and many nations have had their entire roster reworked. So, if you enjoyed today's video and find it useful, make sure to like and subscribe, because I'm also going to be covering other content within Fire and Maneuver. Notably, the two new Japanese factions are going to get guides as how I can suggest to play them, and tips and tricks in order to play them effectively. So if you don't want to miss out on content like that, subscribe, like, and comment. But... Regardless, let's go jump into a quick match and we'll talk about the new artillery. So we have jumped into a quick match where we're going to be able to talk about and discuss various different artillery pieces and the new thing that's available within the artillery. So starting out, artillery now has formations. Similar to how cavalry got it in a previous update and how infantry has always had it, artillery now has the ability to change its formation. There are three formations available to an artillery piece. You have limbered battery, you have a concentrated battery, and then you have open battery. Now, the text here does not work as this is currently a beta. A lot of this is in the beta version right now, which is still being worked on, uh, but we can still show off everything it is. So the first one, Limbered Battery, is actually the only way for your artillery to move. It is, in fact, the only way your artillery can move at all. Artillery now has a base speed of zero, meaning that if you're in a formation such as concentrated battery, your artillery physically cannot move out of its space. However, in limbered battery, it will be able to move at its designated speed. So most artillery gets one speed and then it gets a bonus movement on if it's going on roads. Then, loading into a turn, we have the two other formations. The first one is Concentrated. Concentrated is your standard artillery range and it covers a, the three areas in front of the artillery piece, even if it rotates. But notably, Concentrated Battery does one extra thing. You get to shoot an additional space in front of you so any artillery piece in concentrated actually gets plus one range so this artillery piece i'm here actually only has three range normally but it has four range due to concentrated that is because the other option is to go into open order which has maximum coverage but does not get that extra plus one range so as you can see here this artillery piece is able to cover a massive amount of coverage in just as a three range artillery piece but it doesn't get the extra range. Now, that is not the only part that is new to artillery. Artillery now has a bit of a divide depending on your nation. Some nations have the old cumbersome, meaning artillery can only change formation or shoot. And this slows down their process quite a bit. These guys are going to take at least two turns, one to move into position, one to change formation, and then they can start shooting. However, some nations that are meant to specialize in artillery instead have more nimble and more, more no mobile pieces that are able to move or change formation and then shoot. Austria is a bit of a unique case where they have efficiency on their artillery, meaning they can move, change formation, and shoot. But the standard one is this unit could move and then on a turn it can essentially change into a formation and then still shoot. Now, the other thing to note is that you still also get benefits from things like horse artillery. They get a passive two movement, although they are still only able to move in limbered. So that is important to keep in mind. 
But regardless, let's get into this match a little bit. Also, I can show off, for example, this regular four-piece, art four-range artillery now has five range. You can see it covers quite a vast distance once properly set up. But now let's actually go against the enemy unit real quick where we can show off uh, the ability, the other ability we can use, what is called suppression. Suppression is the other new mechanic for artillery. Essentially, when an artillery unit now shoots the enemy, it will deal suppression damage. And what suppression does is it makes it so a unit that is suppressed only regains a single point of cohesion at the start of their turn. They are unable to do anything... They're not able to gain any more cohesion, which helps to shut down their uh, pass their cohesion regain. For example, we're going to shoot this artillery, this unit right here, and it is now suppressed. That little icon at the bottom, and you can see that it only regain. It went from having one cohesion to having two. It is now suppressed, meaning that if we keep shooting at it, this unit will be suppressed over and over and over again, and will eventually be essentially fully suppressed only having one cohesion until it can get to safety and not get shot at by artillery anymore and this is actually a massive thing for the artillery pieces because what it enables is that artillery is now very strong at breaking down a unit's cohesion at a distance this is most notable for stuff like heavy guard units that are sitting with five cohesion these guys have been incredibly powerful throughout the entire existence of the game due to just their stats being so hard to wear down. You had to really focus fire them or you had to move in and block their cohesion regeneration. But now you also have artillery as an option in order to actually shoot at and wear down the enemy. And this is the big thing that makes artillery potentially more interesting. Because it is going to serve a much more defined and interesting tool where the enemy, where you can essentially use them to soften enemies up before going in for a fight. Which is something that previously artillery was unable to do. You really had to really commit to artillery to make it effective. But now, one artillery piece could be a great way to shut down an enemy's key units, such as wearing down their foot guards or something similar to that. Now that we've talked about the two major changes to artillery in formations and suppression, now I want to quickly skim through all the nations and give my thoughts on their artillery, how useful it will be for that faction, and also just generally, should you start taking artillery. So let's start out with the First Nation, France. France as a nation has cumbersome artillery. Their artillery got very few changes, but they still retain their cumbersome, which means that their artillery is slow to set up and takes a lot of time to get into position. However, their artillery also notably has three cohesion. And that may not seem like a big deal, but it actually kind of is. Because it means that these units are a little bit more tanky when it comes to getting shot at. And this means that your artillery can a little bit more consistently hold its own under fire. Ideally, you're not getting your artillery shot at, but with three cohesion, for example, a stray shot is not going to start damaging your artillery pieces. So that extra cohesion does actually matter a bit. But France as a nation already has quite a bit of power in terms of its infantry and also its cavalry. Its artillery is admittedly hard to see working into there because France already has so much ranged firepower. But it's possible that on the right map, a Houtzer or a horse artillery or even something like the Mitra would still see some use. Having the ability to break up enemy cover or suppress an enemy heavy infantry could be a really powerful combination with something like your Grenadiers or Voltigeers. So... I don't expect France to use artillery a lot, but almost I think every nation will want to at least consider it and maybe check on certain maps as to whether or not they're really going to need it. 
Then we move on to Britain. Now, Britain actually has probably the best artillery in the game, or second best. And the reason for that is that it is a combination of three cohesion, so they have the extra durability, and instead of cumbersome, they have efficiency. Now, this drives the price up horrifically. These things are costing an arm and a leg in order to take. For example, this horse artillery with efficiency, extremely powerful. It's costing the same as a heavy foot guard infantry. But just simply put, having efficiency is a very powerful trait. And it makes the, artil the various cannons for the British very, very good. There is a lot of power that can be found within efficiency because you can move and then you can set up and then you can possibly shoot. And with three cohesion and the extra range, these things are very, very powerful and complement Britain well because even though they don't have a lot of firepower, having like a field howitzer that can essentially sort of shift itself or be in an open battery and cover practically the entire battlefield can be really, really powerful. It also has things like the Gatling gun and stuff like the 12-pound Armstrong gun. Notably, I want to point out that breech-loading artillery is also incredible now due to suppression. Being able to suppress two units for just a single unit is very powerful. And they also can just do double duty. And if they deal, say, four damage to an enemy unit and they're suppressed, that means they're going to have no cohesion. And the Armstrong will actually start to annihilate them after just a few rounds of shooting. It's a very, very powerful combination of artillery pieces. And pretty much I could see Britain realistically taking one artillery piece in almost any composition because it's just that good. Then we're going to the king of the artillery, Prussia. Prussian artillery is an interesting case. Notably, you're going to notice that all of their artillery pretty much has cumbersome on it. And that is intentional because the artillery pieces still have their breech loading range drilled combination. However, they also have three cohesion now. Russian artillery is, I think, definitely very worthwhile now. Simply put, suppression works very well with the very aggressive nature that your various infantry units want to present. And being able to suppress down an enemy unit and then go in with something like a line infantry or whatever is very, very powerful. Of particular note is the six pound Krupp artillery noticeably is now the longest range and hardest hitting artillery in the game. In concentrated battery, it deals six damage shooting in a unit twice and then suppresses them. And what this means is that with six range, the six pound Krupp artillery can kill a unit, can kill a standard line infantry with six health and four cohesion. It, the Krupp artillery will kill it in two shots or in two rounds if it shoots at it twice. That is ridiculous and is very, very powerful. Although its price definitely reflects that being among the most expensive things in the entire game. Notably, however, the Krupp Mortar has received a change, no longer having range drill, but instead having indirect fire. This is both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, the Krupp Mortar would be probably utterly broken if it was able to annihilate any unit. However, with indirect fire and breech loading and five range, this mortar is a horrific monster of, in terms of suppression and pretty much just dominating the battlefield. You can essentially put this guy several tiles behind your line and he'll still be able to cover the entire battlefield and suppress and wear down pretty much anything. It's an incredibly powerful unit still and it's actually a bit cheaper and you'll have to make a decision as to what Krupp pieces you're actually interested in taking. The six pound Krupp is better at outright killing, but the Krupp mortar is probably far easier to utilize and still does a lot of damage and is very good at suppressing. But regardless, Prussia is definitely still, I would say, the best single artillery in the game. Uh, I would say it's a little bit better than Britain just because there's so much firepower with range drill and breech loading on all their stuff. 
Then we move on to Russia. Russia has not the best artillery out there, but it is dirt cheap. Uh, they Their artillery has, for example, only two cohesion. They also have disorganized and cumbersome, but this also drives the price way down. The only unit that is of particular note is that their howitzer has three cohesion, meaning that it is a bit more durable, but it also is more expensive. But otherwise, all of their units pretty much are just disorganized, cumbersome. Except for their uh, Gorlov gun, which is a different type of weapon and can move and shoot more effectively. Regardless, Russia, I think, will actually also be quite interested in artillery. Cheap artillery is very, very good. And that's the big thing with suppression, is that it doesn't matter the quality of the artillery piece. Any artillery piece suppresses, meaning that if you spend 130 points to bring one field artillery, you're going to be able to suppress that enemy foot guard the same as anything like the Krupp mortar would. You're just paying more for an ease of use. Russia is already very swarmy and did get some other changes, but being able to suppress and combo with their new focus on shock could be a very powerful one-two punch. Notably, their howitzer, even though quite expensive, could be very good at suppressing down an enemy unit, and then you go in for a devastating charge that wipes the enemy out. Or you can just opt for cheaper stuff. It's still relatively flexible, and I believe that Russia is another nation is one of the nations that will still definitely make use of artillery, but you just have to probably opt for maybe cheaper option. Like uh, one or two horse artillery should be easy for Russia to fit in because their stuff is so cheap anyway. Then we jump over to the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire is a very similar story to Russia. Their artillery pieces for the most part have a cumbersome they have two cohesion and then they have disorganized and breakable where possible and this makes them very cheap but also very fragile breakable and two cohesion means that ottoman artillery is one of the weakest in the game and if shot at or pressured at all they will generally die however this is something that prussia or that the ottomans will probably deal with because notably in the late period they get access to four pound krupp guns and even a crappy Krupp gun is a monster of an artillery piece, especially with the extra range. Like this, there was already a lot of Ottoman builds that were making use of the Krupp artillery because it offered extra range drill for a nation that otherwise is largely devoid of it. So having the Krupp artillery here does a lot to further their power. And with the extra range or extra coverage, I can only imagine the four pound Krupps become just as good if not better than they were previously and then you can obviously back that up with gatling guns and other artillery if you're looking to suppress before sending in your boshies or anything like that then we jump over to austria austria is a nation that actually had one of the better artillery comps going into the update and now still retains very high power they're, they don't have many artillery pieces and their artillery pieces are very expensive but as you can see their artillery has the three cohesion threshold that the other higher end artillery units have. They also have indirect fire, and they also have efficiency on their lighter artillery pieces. Their heavier artillery doesn't have that, but regardless, this is very, very powerful. Efficiency on an artillery piece is very strong and i talked about it with britain it's just so flexible and you're able to run over the enemy with just being able to move change formation and then blast away it gives you a lot of flexibility and makes them very quick to respond to any pressure and i would say the austrian empire is close is closely tied to second place with the british empire the british empire is arguably a bit worse because it doesn't have indirect fire but it also is saving about 40 points on average and in a nation like britain just one artillery piece can do a lot of work while the ottomans they're paying a lot for these these are very very expensive and it's possible that you're not able to afford them in certain compositions, and that's the only thing that might be holding the Austrians back. But if you can fit one in, it will definitely get value. 
suppressing, being able to quickly change and adapt to a situation alongside just having good firepower and the ability to shoot over friendly units is very, very powerful. And I expect Ashir definitely is going to continue being one of the better nations out there in terms of artillery. Then we get into the Kingdom of Sardinia, Piedmont, or Italy. The Italian faction has essentially the same thing as Russia in terms of their artillery. They are cumbersome. They're essentially a little bit better than Russia overall. They have two cohesion, and most of their artillery pieces have cumbersome. But it's a fine roster overall. Italy previously didn't make any use of artillery. However, with suppression, that could potentially help with your various units because Italy was a very interesting faction uh, in terms of how it plays. But with certain aggressive units like the Bersagaliri alongside like redshirt Zouaves and redshirt Volunteers, the ability to have some suppression running around or just having better coverage could help these units a fair bit in actually winning out trading fights against enemy units. It's overall a bit hard to see them being a mainstay of an Italian build, but it is nice when you need them. But I would say that Italy is probably one of the least interested in artillery overall. The only notable exception would be this 12 centimeter red shirt mountain gun, which has efficiency and rugged on it, which means that this thing is able to essentially dash through uh, artillery for me, is able to dash through a forest and then set up and shoot its stuff. I believe this should have indirect fire also because it's a mountain gun and the ones in the uh, American factions does as well. So I think that this is not a complete unit, but when it does get the additional indirect fire, I could see this being a very solid unit because being able to have an artillery piece backing up red shirts and sitting safely in a forest line or like quickly crossing a river could be very powerful. So this may be the one standout artillery piece for Italy. Then we move on to the two American nations. These nations actually have, I would say, one of the better artillery ends. Uh, the biggest thing is that their artillery pretty much all has two cohesion, but they don't have cumbersome, meaning that they can change formation or move and then shoot. And that gives them some extra flexibility compared to some of the other factions. Being able to essentially pivot your artillery and, like, say, face a new threat and then blast it is something that is that other nations can lack. And overall, I think that, especially for the United States, their artillery is just very well-rounded. you got capabilities to pretty much tackle any problem. And notably, you have this 3-inch ordnance rifle, which is actually a very strong artillery piece, in my opinion. It's a basic 4-range artillery piece, but it has range drill which is actually a very nice trait. Being able to deal three damage means that it will block a lot more cohesion regeneration than other artillery pieces. I already what considered the three-inch ordnance rifle a very strong artillery piece for the U.S., and I can only expect that this will remain very powerful with the updated artillery, but now there may be actually reasons to take the other tools also. Taking something like a 12-pound Napoleon it's cheap, costing only 170, and can give our somewhat low cohesion army some nice needed firepower before they get brawled in those melees that they often find themselves in. And then we move on to the Confederate States of America. You're going to notice it is pretty similar to that of the American or the USA. The only exception being that its four range artillery is a bit worse off because it doesn't have uh, range drill, unlike its counterpart, the three inch ordnance rifle. This means that the Confederates do have a little bit worse artillery overall. And it is admittedly a bit harder to see the artillery in the Confederates being used, but not having cumbersome, I think, is such a big thing for artillery that you're still probably going to consider it. There's just a lot of power in being very flexible with what you're able to acquire. And I think that 
overall, the Confederates will still look to maybe take their 10-pound Parrot rifle or something like the Howitzer if they need an artillery piece. Not having Cumbersome is just like, puts them automatically like above a lot of other nations in terms of their artillery pieces because it just makes you so much more flexible. You're able to like move into a position and then set up and then shoot at something. Instead of taking three turns, you only take two turns, which can be massive in terms of being able to bring about your firepower more effectively. However, that is not it now. Normally, this would be the end of the unit discussion, but we have two new factions, the Shogunate and the Sacho Alliance, or Imperial Japan, depending on the time period. So talking about the Shogunate, and we'll talk about them more when we do the guides covering them, but their artillery is very interesting for two primary reasons. First off, it is extremely cheap. These units have two cohesion, they only have four health, and they have cumbersome on them. They're very, very weak in terms of staying power. However, they have two things that are making them, they have melee drill on them is the big thing. And melee drill is really interesting on an artillery piece now. For those that don't know, our melee drill got a bit of a rework to where now units take one less damage when they get charged, or when they're in a charge, they take one less damage from the impacts, and they deal one less, and they deal in a bonus damage at the end of their turn. And what this means for the artillery is essentially these guys are a bit more durable to getting charged. And that is very interesting because these artillery pieces are pretty cheap overall, low in cost, and although they're a bit clunky to wield, if the enemy gets like a cavalry in and charges your artillery piece, it's actually not the end of the world for them, because they can actually kind of sort of put up a fight in melee, and especially with how the Shogunate has seemingly played, which is a very swarmy faction, I think artillery will be very useful within the Shogunate, because they really do lack in terms of range firepower. Their units, they have very limited options for shooting at stuff and being effective at that because they only have a limit of four rifles in every period. Meaning their firepower kind of has to come from the artillery pieces. They also notably have this very, very funny wooden cannon. It is the cheapest artillery in the game, costing almost costing less than most infantry do baseline. But they pretty much have all of the negative benefits on them. They're cumbersome, they're disorganized, they're breakable, two cohesion, four health, three range. Like, you literally could not make a worse artillery piece than this. But that price is so cheap. Honestly, you could fit wooden cannons into almost any composition for the Shogunate I've found. And generally, they can get off a couple shots. They're able to help you swarm the enemy because you're just bringing so much alongside them actually been quite effective and then the final nation is the sacho alliance or the imperials as i'm going to refer to them so the imperials have a pretty standard artillery setup uh it's a bit more in line with something like italy or russia two cohesion they're cumbersome they're not great especially because the imperials are a lot better in terms of range combat than the shogunate is so they do sometimes lack a bit of firepower. However, they do notably have an Armstrong gun, which gives them some extra firepower in terms of attacking the enemy. And they also have access to just generally some decent options for artillery. It's not a great selection. And I think that of them, Italy or the Imperials is kind of like Italy, where they'll take the artillery if they want to, but they're, unless it's the modern 12-pound Armstrong gun, they might not always be taking this. But that is all of the new nations, or a peek at the new nations, alongside all of the nations with their artillery. And that is the notable changes to artillery. Having played with it, I have found it very, very effective and very fun now. And in fact, I have actually gone back and tried to work artillery into almost every single nation in terms of compositions because it's very very useful as a tool you can't rely on it to carry a fight but having one moving around on the battlefield is very very powerful and i've really enjoyed what 
has changed with the artillery. If you're interested in trying this, Fire and Maneuver is having a beta that is currently available to anyone. You can just simply go on Steam and change it to the beta version of it, where you can test out the two new factions alongside the artillery changes talked about here. But otherwise, that is all I have for you today. If you've made it all to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And again, make sure to like and subscribe as we're going to be making guides over the Shogunate and the Imperials as the new factions, as they are coming out in a DLC in about a month from the time of this video. Alongside that, I also plan to remake pretty much a guide for every single nation due to this artillery rework and seemingly the game reaching a very finalized state. So, make sure to not miss out on that, but otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a good day.